Hello friends, welcome back. It is February 28th and there are a few seeds that I want to start today because they require a long time to grow and our summers are not long enough for them to produce fruit or desired parts. Today I'm going to be starting some Moringa seeds. A subscriber gave me these seeds last fall and I've always thought about growing Moringa here in Zone 7A and I was thinking, well, how could I grow it? So the reason you would grow Moringa is because you want to eat the leaves and sometimes people also eat the green pods, like green beans kind of thing. And so if you want them to produce pods like this, they have to be quite mature. I am not sure if I'm going to have enough time in the summer months for them to produce pods, but they'll be able to produce plenty of leaves that I can eat in salads or juice them. They're supposed to be really good for you. I have tried Moringa leaves in El Salvador and they are not the tastiest. So I'm hoping that this is a different cultivar, maybe, and they taste a little bit different. But every year I like to grow different crops that are unique. And how cool would it be if you're driving in Falls Church, Virginia, and you see a Moringa tree growing in someone's yard? That's what I want. <laughs> In order to sprout your Moringa seeds, you want to take them out of this husk here. And I've already removed two, it was a little longer. And last night, I put them in a cup of water, like this. And they have been floating in there for about 12 hours now. And they are fully hydrated. The seeds are kind of funky looking. They kind of look like a, like a hazelnut, but they have like uh, three sides to it. So that's pretty cool. So I hydrated these and I'm gonna be using the paper towel method to sprout them. So for the paper towel method, you're gonna need a Ziploc bag and a wet paper towel. I've used this paper towel before to sprout something else and that's fine. You can reuse your paper towels unless they have mold. Don't use any moldy ones. This one had a mango seed in it. So you can reuse your paper towels, no problem. Unless they have mold, don't use those again. Anyways. Here I am putting my two seeds in here and I'm gonna fold them over just like that. Add a little bit of water because it needs a lot of water. It needs a lot of moisture. You wanna wring it out and get rid of some of the excess moisture. And then you wanna put that inside your Ziploc bag and, and seal your Ziploc bag. And this will have to go on the heat mat. I hope you have a heat mat because I've been recommending those for quite some time now and they are just the greatest invention they've ever made for gardening. Anyways, here we go. So I'm going to save the rest of these seeds because I'm testing out the project here. If those sprout real easy, then I'll grow them out and then these I'll just grow directly outdoors or sprout them like two to three weeks before the last frost. The next thing I want to grow today is Thai Red Roselle. And in El Salvador, we call this Jamaican tea, and it produces this calyxis on the top. It's like the flower part. And then once it's mature, you dry it out and you make a tea out of it. And it turns out really red and it's pretty good. It's pretty tasty. This right here is related to okra and it's in the okra family. The problem with these right here is that it takes a super long summer to grow them out. And I grew them in 2021 and I ran out of time and I wasn't able to collect seeds. And none of the calyxes really were mature enough to where I felt comfortable uh, that they were fine enough to make a tea. So I kind of lost out on that. But I didn't put them in the best location so that they probably didn't have the best sunlight. And this year I'm going to give them a prime location so that I can grow them out. To start the seeds the same process has to be done. I put the seeds in water for about 12 hours and they have been soaking in here. And now I'm gonna put them in a paper towel and I'm gonna put them inside that Ziploc bag again and put them on my heat mat and they should sprout in like seven days. At least that's what the packet says. These seeds look like okra seeds and maybe a little bit slightly different, but they are related to okra. The flowers actually look pretty much the same like an okra flower. We're just gonna place the seeds on top of this paper towel. And I have, I think, let's see here. I have 10, I had 10, and then I lost one in here. Oh, there it is. So yeah, we have 10 seeds. We're gonna cover them up just like this. Nothing scientific about it. 
you add moisture to it and that's all you have to do now you put it in inside the Ziploc bag and let it go for a few days I'm gonna date this so I remember then I'm gonna put this bag right on top of this and every day I come down here I flip the bag because this produces condensation and then the water evaporates to the top so then the bottom can get dry so you got to be careful to switch it every day so that the seeds don't dry out on you and that's all you have to do to start your seeds for moringa seeds and some jamaican roselle if you have any questions please leave them in the comments down below and hopefully i can help you answer some of them Again, I am gardening in Zone 7A, Northern Virginia, and I haven't seen anybody growing Moringa farther north than this, and I'm gonna be putting those in the ground. In the fall, before the frost, I will take cuttings from the Moringa trees, and then bring them indoors, root them out, and then keep them going for a few years, if I like them. If I don't like them, then I'll put them up for free on Buy Nothing or something. Thank you so much for watching today's video and make sure that you are subscribed so you can see the updates on how those seeds do and how fast they sprout. I'm going to be coming down here every day checking on them and if they sprout I'm going to make a video about it so make sure that you're subscribed. See you on the next one.